Hey, it's Bernard Nomberg with the Nomberg Law Firm, and I wanted to take a few minutes to discuss different ways that you can prove that you're disabled when applying for Social Security Disability Benefits with the Social Security Administration. There's three different avenues a person can take, and not all of these avenues will apply to each person, and more than one avenue can be approached, but I wanted to go through these and just give you some highlights something for you to think about when it's time for you to apply. The three theories are as, as follows. Social Security listing, the grid rules, and then functional capacity. And let's start with Social Security listing. Social Security listing is, Part A is for adults, Part B is for, for children under 18. And there's a listing, and there's a manual that's been updated as recently as 2018 of a list of impairments. And I'm going to just run through a few of these. There's too many to list here today. Uh, musculoskeletal problems such as back injuries, that's one listing. Cardiovascular conditions such as heart failure or coronary artery disease, again, another type of listing that can be uh, used. Senses and speech issues such as vision and hearing. Respiratory illnesses such as COPD and asthma. Neurological disorders mental disorders, immune system disorders, and again, there's, there's numerous uh, different listings here, and if you feel you fit into one of those criteria based on your conditions, you can take that approach, the Social Security listing approach. If you don't feel you fit within there, you can look at what's called the medical vocational guidelines, which are commonly called the grid rules, there's a Social Security Administration for years has been putting out something called the Blue Book. The Blue Book is that listing. It's actually a grid. And the different um, criteria that you have to analyze to see where you fall within the grid rules are as follows. Your age, your education, your previous work experience, and then the decision whether you fall uh, favorable or unfavorable within the decision. And what they're analyzing is it helps the agency determine whether you can reasonably expect it to hold a full-time job. Now, the older a person gets, the easier the criteria within the grid uh, is when you're analyzing your particular claim. Under 40 versus over 40, under 50 versus over 50. And there's too much in the grid to go over in this particular video, but it's the second one of the different types of theories that you can approach. Now the third type I think may be the most uh, commonly used and that's called the functional capacities theory. And that's proving your capacity to perform even a simple sit-down entry-level job has been so reduced by your medical impairments that you'd not be a reliable worker eight, day, eight hours a day, five days a week which is basically the functional capacities argument. One of the arguments that can be used, that's one of the arguments that can be used uh, in your claim for Social Security disability benefits. Basically, when you make a functional capacity argument, you're saying that because of the limitations that you have from all of your medical conditions due to your physical or mental health conditions, you'd not be a reliable worker. Now, there are many examples of, of how to prove that. In every case, every person's situation is different. So I won't give any examples, uh, specific examples for that. But just in summary, Social Security listing, grid rules, and functional capacity uh, capabilities is the th uh, three different theories to prove that you can use to prove if you're disabled. If you have questions or concerns about any of these approaches, just give us a call. This is the kind of work that we do. I can be reached at 205-930-6900. Nomberglaw.com is our website. We also have a very active YouTube channel with many other videos on this topic. Uh, we, are, we can also be found on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks.